Yeah, so praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good evening for those of you who are tuning in from other parts of the country and the world. Amen. This is, amen, another day that the Lord has made, and by his grace we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We have rejoiced. Amen. Thank the Lord for a good praise and testimony service. Amen. Thank the Lord for the faithful few that's here. Amen. And those who are tuning in and those who are God is going to, amen, in due time, draw into this way. Amen. Draw in in our midst. Amen. We just have to be faithful. Amen. Because God loves faithfulness. Amen. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. It was just, I can recall when it was just only me and my wife. Amen. It was just only us two had the church. Amen. No one else was around. Amen. Just me, my wife, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. And then sometime after, amen, the Lord draw. Amen. My mother. Amen. Thank the Lord for that. Amen. Amen. Sister Georgina. Amen. And so we thank God for those who's here. Amen. And I tell you, God's going to bless you for your faithfulness. Amen. And we thank God for, amen, Sister Elizabeth now and our midst. Amen. In Jesus' name. And so we thank God for what he is doing. We thank God for what he's done. Amen. We thank God for the truth. Amen. Of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Because he said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Amen. In Jesus' name. So only the truth is going to make you free. Amen. And a lie is not going to make you free. Amen. A lie is only going to leave you bound. So we're not here to preach lies this morning. Amen. We used to believe a lie. Amen. Once upon a time, but amen. We thank God for the truth. Amen. In Jesus' name, praise God. Because I won, amen. And I was in here. Amen. We grew up in, amen, Trinitarian, amen, organizations. Amen. Where they believe in three. Amen. Three different gods. In other words, three chairs, or three personalities. Amen. God is not one person in three separate personalities. <coughs> Amen. That's a lie, amen, that the devil has conjured up, amen, if you want to say amen. Amen. But for those of us who, who know that there is only one true God, amen, who sits on the throne, amen, and his name is one, amen. He revealed himself to us as the Father, amen, and he was known as the Word, and he later put on flesh, amen, in order to redeem us, amen. So then he was called the Son, amen, praise the Lord. And then Amen. He revealed himself to us. Amen. To mankind as the Holy Ghost. Amen. But, amen, not three separate people. It's just one supreme being. Amen. So God is, amen, he's only one. Amen. And we know him today as Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lamb of God who came down from heaven in order to take away the sins of the world. Amen. That whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Even as he quoted in John 3, 16, that's one of the most misunderstood verses in the Bible. Amen. False prophet run with it. Say, oh, all I got to do is believe and do nothing else. Uh, you, you have to do more than just supposedly believe with your mind. Amen. You have to, amen, have some action, some works, amen, to show proof of that belief. That's why the Bible here says faith without works is dead. Amen. Man, pick it up. Amen. That's why the Bible says faith without works is dead. Amen. Being alone. Amen. So if a person has faith in God, they're going to have some action, some works, amen, behind their supposed faith. Amen. So that's why, amen, we believe, amen, in the gospel of Jesus Christ because we obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, which consists of the death, burial, and resurrection. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why I repented of my sins. Amen. In other words, I became a partaker of in Jesus' death. Amen. I was baptized in his name. In the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of my sins. I was, I was a partaker of his burial. Amen. And I was a partaker of his resurrection when he rose himself from the dead after three days and three nights. Amen. I received that resurrection power. Amen. When I received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. It's spoken of the tongue that the Spirit gave the utterance. Amen. It's indicated in Acts chapter 2 verse 38. Amen. And then Luke 24, 47, Jesus said that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name 
Amen. Jesus didn't say his title. Amen. So, amen. We're not supposed to go around saying, I now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost and never use the name. Amen. Because Father is not a name. We know Son is not a name. We know Holy Ghost is not a name. Amen. We know that Jesus is the name. Amen. That's why the, the true apostles of Jesus Christ and every other man of God that came after them went about baptizing in Jesus' name. Amen. You read through the book of Acts. You read Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Yes. Amen. Read Acts chapter 8. Read Acts chapter 10. Read Acts chapter 19. They use Jesus' name. Yes. They didn't say Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Yes. Amen. But the false prophet to tell you that was only for them back then. It ain't for us today. Amen. Use the title if you want. Some of them don't even believe in baptism at all. Amen. Some false prophet to tell you, amen, baptism is not necessary for salvation. Amen. But that's a lot. Amen. But they are they follow the devil. Amen. The devil, amen, is who they're working for. Amen. That's why they are telling those people lies. Amen. That's why they were lying to us, amen, before we ran for our life. Amen. In Jesus' name. So amen. So we, we thank God for the truth. Amen. The truth yes. always, you know, it's not a pleasant thing sometimes, you know, when someone tells you the truth, especially when it offends you, amen, or it it challenges your way of thinking, amen. It challenges your current mindset. It challenges, amen, the type of lifestyle that you're accustomed to or that you're used to participating in, amen. That's what the truth does, amen. It convicts, amen, but it also comforts, amen. Thank you, be of good courage, amen. God loves you, amen. God loves us all, amen. He loves me, he loves you, amen. He loves the worst and sin out there, yes. amen. He loves everyone's soul. But God hates sin. Yes, he does. Amen. So that's why we have to get sin out of our life. Amen. If you want to, amen, go into the kingdom of heaven, amen, you want to be in the presence of Jesus Christ for all eternity, amen, then you must repent and turn from the practice of your sinful ways. There's no other way around it. The sinner's prayer is not going to get you into God's kingdom. I don't care how many times you recite it. Amen. I know when I was in sin, I used to recite the sinner's prayer a lot of times. Amen. Especially after I was hung over. Amen. I say the sinner's prayer and thought I was all right. Amen. Before I came into holiness. Amen. Because you read the Bible, you're not going to see sinner's prayer nowhere in the Bible. Amen. Apostle Peter didn't say, everyone bow your head and repeat after me the sinner's prayer. Nope. Amen. That, that's, that stuff came up, I guess, around the, based on what I know, amen, and research around the 40s and the 1950s. Amen. False prophets like Graham and all of them started spearheading that sinner's prayer foolishness. Amen. And now it's just all ramping through the land. Amen. But we thank God, amen, for the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's written in the scriptures. Amen. What I'm telling you, amen, you can read it for yourself in the Bible. Amen. So you're not just taking my word for it, as they say. You, hear, you may hear a person say, take my word for it. Trust me. Well, I'm telling you, you don't have to take my word for it. You don't have to trust me. Open up your Bible and read it for yourself. Amen. And then you decide. Amen. <clears throat> so we give God the praise. Amen. And so we won't be up here too long, Lord willing. We're just going to touch over a few things. Amen. That we uh, went over on the radio. Amen. That we preached on the radio uh, yesterday. Amen. Because, you know, we had such a limited time. You know, amen. Sometimes we get on there for 30 minutes. Sometimes we get on there for 15 minutes, you know. But yesterday we was on there for 15 minutes. And, and there's really so much you can say within 15 minutes. Yep. Amen. You have to kind of make the most of that. But we thank the Lord, amen, that he quickened us to make the most of that short period of time. Amen. So, amen. And one of the things that I was talking about on the radio, amen, if you heard, amen, if you was tuning in, is that God brought the storms, amen, to this land. Amen. He brought the storm through Texas. He brought oh, the Hurricane Harvey. He brought Hurricane Rita. Amen. Through Florida. Amen. And, and what is it? Hurricane Maria? Yeah. Through Puerto Rico. God spoke the word and those storms came. Amen. And done what God wanted it to do. Amen. Nothing yeah. catch God by surprise. Amen. Now, false prophet will tell you, no, that wasn't God doing. No, no, no. God don't do that. God is love. Uh, God couldn't be so merciless. Uh, false prophet to tell you that. 
Amen. False prophet even goes so far to say that the devil did it. Because he's a false prophet. Amen. He's a, a lying snake. Amen. Sent by the devil. Amen. That's why Jesus called them. He called them false prophets snakes. He called them serpents. He called them vipers. Amen. And we can go there. Amen. Before I go and touch on amen, what we're going to touch on, we, we can just make it plain like Jesus said. Amen. Let's see here. I think it's in Matthew. So hold your place. Well, okay. We haven't even went there yet, but Okay, Matthew chapter 23. <clears throat> so the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 23. And this is how Jesus described, and that in this day, he was addressing the scribes and Pharisees. I mean, they were the religious leaders of that day, amen, that people looked up to. Similar to today, you know, these so-called false prophets claim to be Christian leaders, amen, that have mega churches and have hundreds and thousands of members, amen, worldwide and you know, big buildings, amen. It's nothing different, amen. Same spirit, amen, different types. Amen, so Matthew chapter 23, and we're just, uh, of course, you can read this entire chapter on your own time, but we're just going to read several verses to bring out a point. So Matthew chapter 23, beginning at verse 26. So when you get there, you say amen. amen. Matthew chapter 23, beginning at verse 26. Amen. So this is the Lord Jesus Christ talking to these scribes and Pharisees, calling them out. Amen. Calling them what they really are. Amen. So he wasn't sugarcoating it. He wasn't, amen, mincing words or, or dancing around the fence, as they say, amen. He was just telling it plainly. And so verse 26, he says, thou blind Pharisee, amen. He, he called them blind, amen. Even though they had natural sight, but spiritually they were blind, amen. He said, thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. And you see that explanation point. So that means he was, he had his voice elevated. Amen. He even yelling at them. Amen, you can say. Making sure that they heard every word he said. For ye are like unto whited sepulchres. Amen. Which are tombs for the dead. That's what a sepulcher is which indeed appear beautiful outward, amen, and you can even look today, amen, Be, uh, you know, cemeteries, and, yeah. you know, people, tombstones, be all beautified and everything, yeah, amen, yeah. Mm -hmm. flowers, you know, they, they, some of them, if they were wealthy or whatever, they make sure that the flowers are fresh, that they bring out there, keep them planted, amen, and groomed and landscaped. So he's calling the, the false prophet, amen, the same way as a, uh, a white sepulchre, in other words, a beautified tomb for the dead. Yeah. He said, which indeed appear beautiful outward, and, and these false prophets, they look pretty good on the outside. I don't wear nice suits, keep themselves well groomed, amen, well manicured and everything, amen, pretty. Yeah. Some of them too pretty, uh -huh. amen. Some of them even <laughs> bending over for men, <laughs> amen. A lot of them, amen, come out the closet, amen. And that's why a lot of them dying of AIDS. Amen. Because God gave them over to that homosexual spirit. I, you expect to, amen, preach and teach lies and, and think that God isn't going to react. Amen. So he said, Woe to you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto white sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward. Amen. So look good on the outside, but are within full of dead men's bones. So on the inside, say, full of, men, of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. In other words, they have a filthy heart. Amen. A lot of them, amen, they still drink. They still smoke. Amen. They still club. They still get high. Yep. Amen. Committing adultery. Amen. Sleeping with other women in the church. Sleeping with other men in the church. 
Amen. They doing it all, but yet they'll stand up before people and say, I'm a man of God. Amen. And then it says, verse 28, even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Amen. And iniquity, that's deep sin. Yeah. Oh, no. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous and say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore, ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fear ye up then the measure of your fathers. And then this way he goes, they already call them blind, amen, look good on the outside, wicked on the inside. And now he really just calls them out on verse 33, Matthew chapter 23. He said, ye serpents. What's a serpent? That's a snake. A snake full of poison, amen. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, amen. And we know a viper is a poisonous snake. Amen. You get bit by a viper, amen. You better have God on your side. Amen. Praise God or somebody that can give you some immediate medical attention. Because otherwise, you ain't going to be here much longer after that. Amen. You get, amen, bit by a viper. Okay. He said, you serpents, you generation of vipers. How can he escape the damnation of hell? And false prophets are just as poisonous. Amen. Yes, With these lies that they are telling people. Yep. Tell people all you have to do is just do the best you can because mm. God know your heart. He know you can't help it. Amen. But you still saved and you're going to go to heaven once you die. Amen. That's poisonous. Amen. Because a lot of people believe in that. Yeah. Amen. So they just as poisonous as a snake and a viper. Amen. But that wasn't quite the message. But we were just, amen. Praise God. Lord had us to go there. But basically, amen, we just want to touch on what we spoke about yesterday, amen, regarding God sending the storm and the wind, amen. Like I say, God brought these storms, amen, hurricanes to the United States, amen. Yeah, there's some good things going on here, but this is a very wicked nation. Yes, it is. Very wicked. Even though some people claim that this is a Christian nation, it, it, this is not a Christian nation, amen. It's a religious nation. Amen. People have religion, but they don't have Jesus. Amen. They may even call on Jesus, but they're not serving the Jesus of the Bible. Amen. They serving that other Jesus. That Jesus that say you can live any old kind of way. Amen. You can do all you want to do. Live a wicked lifestyle and still somehow, amen, be saved. Amen. So let's go to Psalms 148. So the 148th division of Psalms. And you can see for yourself, amen, that God is the one who calls, amen, the storm and the rain. All the elements, amen, are under God's control, amen, under Jesus Christ's control. Amen. We know that Jesus is God. The Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the light was the light of men, and the light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And then John chapter 1, verse 14, it says, Then the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So Jesus Christ, amen, is God, amen, manifested or revealed in flesh. Amen. As one writer said, he's both God and man. <clears throat> so Psalms 148, and when you get there, you say amen. 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 We begin at verse 7. It says, Praise the Lord from the earth, ye dragons, and all deeps, fire, and hell. What do you mean? God calls the fire? Oh, yeah. yeah. Amen. You read scriptures that say, Fire of God came down from heaven. Amen. Yes. So he calls the fire and hell. 
He caused the hell too. Snow. And vapor. And then it says, Stormy is fulfilling his word. So that's Psalms 148, verse 8. It says, Fire and hail, and snow and vapor, stormy wind fulfilling his word. So that includes the hurricanes, the tornadoes, amen, cyclones, tsunamis, you name it. God is the one who called it. Amen. It didn't happen by accident. Amen. God isn't constantly tearing up this city over and over and over again by accident. Amen. He's doing it on purpose. Amen. That's because there's a lot of wickedness goes on in the yep. city of Houston throughout Texas. Amen. They totally flipped the script when they elected a sodomite mayor. Amen. Amen. And all these other wickedness and high, spiritual wickedness in high places that's going on here. Amen. Not to mention the the sins that people commit. Amen. This is a very wicked city. Amen. Ain't hardly no one saved in Houston. Yeah, we see churches everywhere. Amen. Every corner you go to, you see a church here, a church there, a mega church here, a mega church there, false prophet on TV. Amen. But ain't nobody hardly saved in this city. Very few people. Amen. That's truly serving the Lord. That truly has a mind to live holy. Amen. For Jesus Christ. Everyone else, they have a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Amen. They have a, a Catholic form. Amen. They form a godliness like I was. Amen. Growing up, our form of godliness was Baptist. Amen. We was in the Baptist church, which is, of course, part of the, the Protestant Reformation movement. Amen. That actually broke off from the, amen, Revelation chapter 17, Harlot, mother of Harlots and abomination of the earth, which is the Catholic church. Amen. But someone else form of godliness may be AME, African Methodist Episcopal. Someone else form of godliness may be Catholic or Seventh Day Adventist or Presbyterian. Amen. But that is, amen, that's a false. Amen. Say, but denying the power thereof, amen, from such turn away. Amen. So we had to come out of those false religions, amen, in order to come to the truth of God, amen, and be saved. Amen. So, yeah, I know that's probably why we don't get a lot of positive responses. Amen. Very few. Amen. From true saints of God that know the word. Amen. But God called the storm. Amen. It's time for this city to repent. It's time for someone to truly come out of sin and into holiness. To truly, amen, repent of their sins and be born again of the water and of the spirit. Amen. To be baptized in Jesus' name. And let God fill them with the Holy Ghost. And live a holy life. Amen. Amen. To take off the, amen, the, the stuff that they're wearing now. Amen. Looking like pimps and prostitutes. Amen. To change their mindset. Amen. Because when you change your mindset, you're going to change your dress code. That's right. Amen. You ain't going to have your business all out in the street. Amen. If God work on you. Amen. <clears throat> yes, indeed. So we just want to point that out. Amen. And now, amen, getting ready to close. Let's go ahead and go into Acts chapter 2. Yeah, I know we go here a lot, but this is the only plan of salvation. Amen. <clears throat> the only way today that a man or a woman. Amen. Must be saved. Amen. It's not showing in church. It's not putting your name on a membership roll. Amen. It's not doing a bunch of good deeds and hoping that your, your good outweighs your bad. Amen. That's, that's not in the Bible. Amen. You have to be born again. Amen. So all your bad deeds can be washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> so you don't have to be trying to worry about good deeds outweighing the bad. Amen. You have the bad deeds. Amen. Covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. So all that the Lord will see is good. Amen. When you breathe your last breath. Amen. Praise God. And he calls you. Amen. The judgment. He, he won't see nothing but good. Amen. Because the blood will cover the bad. Amen. And then he'll tell you, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Amen. So that good outweigh the bad, that, that's another lie. Amen. I know we grew up here in that. Amen. But that's no way in the Bible. So Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, 
They were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. So this was after, amen, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. And he went back up to heaven, told them to wait and tarry at Jerusalem until they be endued with power from on out. Amen. <clears throat> and so now we're, we're witnessing here, Acts chapter 2 there, amen, in the process of being endued with that power from on high. Amen. And then it says, And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. <clears throat> and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Amen. That's how they knew they were filled with the Holy Ghost. They spoke in other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. They didn't say the sinner's prayer and then supposedly they were instantly filled with the Holy Ghost. No. Amen. And then it says, we read that again, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues or languages as the Spirit gave them utterance. Amen. And for the sake of time, we will, amen, skip some verses. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans and how hear we love a man in our own tongue or language, wherein we were born, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers of Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia in Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes. So proselytes were Gentiles who had converted to Judaism. Amen. So Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, what meaneth this? Others mocking, saying, these men are full of new wine. Verse 14. But Peter, amen, not false prophet real or false prophet Carter. Amen. He said, but Peter, standing up with the eleven with the other eleven apostles, amen, lifted up his voice and said unto them, ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. Amen. Most people don't get drunk at the third hour of the day. They usually wait till later on in the evening or at least late afternoon. Amen. Not in the third hour. So we're going to skip down here. So Apostle Peter went on to say that, amen, Jesus Christ, amen, was the promised Messiah, amen, that most of them had rejected, amen, and crucified and slain who God raised from the dead after three days, amen, and filled them with the Holy Ghost, amen. Peter was full of the Holy Ghost, amen. So the Spirit of God was in him, amen, preaching the truth, amen. And he went on to say that Jesus Amen. His soul was not left in hell, neither did his flesh or his body saw corruption. So his body didn't decay and rot. Amen. Like we will. Amen. Praise God. If God don't, amen, translate us. Amen. Praise God. When a person dies, amen, their body begins to rot. Even with that embalming fluid, it holds it off for a little while. But after that, amen, that decaying or that corruption process, amen, takes place. But that didn't happen with Jesus' body. Amen. Jesus' body was in that grave for three days and three nights, and it did not rot. Amen. It wasn't stinking, nothing. It was totally preserved. Amen. And his soul wasn't left in hell. Amen. Like most sinners, amen, when they die, their soul is left in hell. Because you die in your sins, amen, your soul go to hell, and it's going to stay in hell, amen, until you're called up, amen, amen, to the judgment seat of Christ to be judged as a sinner, just to have a resurrected body and your soul to be cast into the lake of fire. Amen. That's why Jesus said, don't fear them which are able to kill the body, but after that is nothing more that amen, you can do. He said, but rather fear him which is able to kill both body and soul in hell. 
Amen. So we can skip down here. Amen. To verse 36. Amen. So he says, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God have made that same Jesus, whom he have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Amen. They weren't saying, Well, that ain't what my real teeth, that ain't what I grew up in. Amen. That ain't the way I was taught. Now nah, they saying, what shall we do? Amen. What shall they do to get it right, to be saved? Then verse 38, Peter gives them the answer. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized. Amen. No word. Repentance means to turn away from the practice of sin. Amen. Not to slow down, but to totally stop. Amen. To make a 180. Amen. You're supposed to make a 180 to shack it up, committing fornication. Amen. Having sex with someone that's not your husband, not your wife. You're supposed to do a 180. Amen. To being a sodomite. Amen. A homosexual lesbian. Amen. God ain't made you to lay up with someone that has the same gender as you. Amen. Praise God. He made a man for a woman. He made a woman for a man. He didn't make a man for a man and a woman for another woman. Amen. That's abomination. Amen. That's amen against nature, as the Bible says. Amen. You have to repent of that as well. There's no such thing as a Christian homosexual. No, no such thing as a Christian lesbian. No. Amen. No, no, no such thing. Praise no. God. That's a lie. That's amen. So you have to repent of that too. Thank you. Amen. Have to repent of being an alcoholic. Have to repent of your, your clubbing. Amen. Your lying. Your stealing. Your swindling. Amen. You have to repent of adultery. You have to repent. Amen. Of coveting or lusting after someone else's goods. Bible says, Thou shalt not covet. You shouldn't be wanting anything that belongs to someone else. Someone else's house, someone else's car, someone else's husband or wife, amen, someone else's job, amen, that's covetousness. Amen, you have to repent of that too. So Peter said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Same thing that happened to them in the upper room. Amen. The same thing that will happen to you. Amen. When you receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. You will speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave the others. Amen. Not someone put, taking you to a back room and whispering in your ear. Amen. And you making it up or they making it up for you. Amen. That's not the Holy Ghost. Amen. God will take control of that tongue for himself and speak for himself. Amen. Your heart has to be right and it has to be read. Amen. Then it says, For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. So notice, he didn't say, Amen, be baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost in verse 38. He said to be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Amen. Because the name of the Father is Jesus. John chapter 5, verse 43, Jesus said, I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. He said, if another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. And we know that the name of the Son is Jesus. Amen. Matthew 1, 21. Amen. The Bible says that thou shalt bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Amen. In the name of the Holy Ghost is Jesus. John chapter 14, verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Amen. And Peter, full of the Holy Ghost, he knew the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That's why he told them, amen, that they must be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Amen. The name must be used. Amen. Not a title. Amen. For the promises unto you and to your children and to all that are far, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Amen. 
So the 3,000 people, amen, heard the truth, amen, of Acts 2.38, and they obeyed it. Amen. Not, amen, rejected it, saying, well, that's not what my rail say. That's not what my rail teach me. So, uh, no. Amen. Praise God. Your soul has to be more important than what rail say. Amen. Praise God. Because what rail say, amen, going to lead you straight to the pit. Amen. If you keep following me. Amen. So we thank the Lord. We will, amen, stop right there. Amen. So for those of you who are tuning in by way of, amen, the live stream or archive video, amen, this is the Apostolic Holiness Church of Jesus Christ. We are located in Houston, Texas. Amen. We have recently relocated, amen, from the uh, previous uh, facility we were in. Amen. We're now, amen, near the downtown area, amen, of Houston, Texas. So in the address is... Uh, 5820 Katy Freeway, Houston, Texas 77007 That's 5820 Katy Freeway, Houston, Texas 77007 Amen. Inside the Hampton Inn and Suites by Hilton Hotel <coughs> Amen. In one of the conference rooms Just be sure to, amen, see the front desk for details Amen. Pertaining to which room Amen. We're in Amen. And of course, you can give us a call, amen, for uh, more information on that as well. That's 832 360 5812. That's 832 360 5812. Or you can go to our website. That's ahcjc.com. That's ahcjc.com. You can also look us up on Facebook, uh, YouTube, and Twitter, amen, because we have pages on there as well. Amen. So we thank God for you. Amen. Tuning in. Amen. And we pray that the Lord bless you. Amen. In Jesus' name. So, and also, uh, just to uh, give an announcement, uh, Lord will, next Sunday, uh, or next weekend, rather, we will be out of town. Amen. We will be going out of town for a fellowship. Amen. That's Saturday, uh, October the 14th, and October the 15th, Sunday. Amen. So we will not be here next Sunday. Amen. So we will not be here next Sunday on October the 15th, but we will be here the following Sunday, October the 22nd. Amen. So for those of you who are interested in, in coming out and visiting, amen, we will not be here next Sunday on the 15th, but we will be here, amen, the following Sunday on October the 22nd. Amen. In Jesus' name. <clears throat> and then, of course, uh, October the 29th, the Sunday after that. Amen. So we give God the praise, amen, for all things. And uh, at this time, amen, we can go ahead. Those who are able to stand, amen.